God help us. It took two years to put together Fauci. What Janet was with Dr. Fauci was a very small team of just uh, director, camera, and sound. In total, between archivists and editors and associate producers, I would say we were probably about 14 or 15 people. We spent basically 15 months with Dr. Fauci. We probably had about a thousand hours of material. So we used the Alexa for interviews and then we used other cameras for when we were doing Verite work. So we used a variety of cameras on this project. When I think about my dad growing up, I certainly think about that seriousness and wanting to do the right thing. At the same time, very few people get to see. <laughs> He's funny, weird, and really playful. How did you approach Dr. Fauci with the concept for this documentary, and what was his initial response to it? I approached Dr. Fauci because we were working on another project on the AIDS vaccine. And as I was spending time with him, it just occurred to me, wow, he has this incredible life. So I approached him before COVID and asked him if he would consider doing a film about his life. And he thought about it and then came back and said, yes. And then quickly COVID happened and John and I teamed up. And I think it was really important that he had already consented to doing the film before COVID because he didn't have very much time when COVID started. Let's talk about how much of this was filmed really during the peak of the pandemic and what kind of obstacles you had to overcome. We were a very tiny team, as John mentioned, essentially three of us. We lived in quarantine because, as I say to everyone, the, the last thing that I could ever imagine was infecting Dr. Fauci. And we were incredibly careful in following all the guidelines that the CDC had, that the Directors Guild had. And we really tried to keep the same people as much as possible. We all knew um, what the rules were. We were all sort of in self-isolation um, to work with him. In 1981, HIV AIDS was evolving rapidly and frighteningly. There was anger at the response. We accused Tony of causing those deaths. Finally, I put myself into their shoes. That's when I started to really reach out. It was pretty much the first and only time I think anybody in government came to us. That changed everything. The film does not shy away from showing these moments of criticism, be it during the AIDS crisis or when we're talking about mask mandates in relation to the COVID-19 crisis. So how did you find balance in how much of that you wanted to give a voice to and also how much of Dr. Fauci's great work you also wanted to show? I was working at New York Hospital, um, which is one of New York's largest hospitals, and it, was, it is and was a major provider of healthcare to people with HIV AIDS. And I was helping to run the, the AIDS clinic, both inpatient and outpatient at this very time that Dr. Fauci calls the dark years, to see where we came out of that so successfully with Dr. Fauci being also centered to the discovery of you know, the, the triple therapy, which was the effective way of controlling the AIDS virus and saved lives you know, all around the world. And so it was a fascinating and the most difficult thing in making this film was finding where there was a legitimate argument that could be made for comparing and contrasting these times because they're not parallel. The way that the American public reacted to Dr. Fauci in COVID is completely different than, than the criticism that he was going through in HIV AIDS. You know, his ability to reach across the divide and forge you know, a working and productive relationship and how that eluded him today, that's one of the most important aspects of the film. When you got sick, you were gone fast. It was so frustrating when you're used to fixing things and you're just not really fixing anything. It's affecting you now. Yeah. Why? Um, post-traumatic stress syndrome. In regards to the AIDS crisis, another revelation that made headlines when this documentary came out was Dr. Fauci's 
moment where he got very emotional speaking about a former patient of his and even revealed that he suffers from PTSD. What was your reaction in that moment? We had never had a conversation with Dr. Fauci in, in going into these interviews about how they needed to be different than the hundreds, thousands of other interviews that he had done. His display of emotion at that moment revealed that he understood instinctively that what we were doing was being a portrait of him. He had to be emotionally available in a way that it's not appropriate when he's being interviewed as a public health expert. And so when he did, I fully expected him to say, you know what, I don't want you to use that. Please don't use that. I don't, I don't, it's not appropriate for me to become emotional. But he didn't. And our relationship with him changed at that moment. You know, people ask me, what are the surprises? And when you are around um, Tony Fauci for a length of time, you realize that he wears his heart on his sleeve, that medicine isn't, or public health isn't an abstract field. It isn't a field just of numbers or, or larger communities. It's the story of people and that he really feels that. And he, he has walked through his life for 40, 50 years feeling that and that that's how he approaches it. Fauci says, here are the facts and here's my recommendation for a way forward. He becomes the size of the challenge he faces each time. He also opened up about his relationship, not only with President Trump, but President Trump's relationship with the press and how that affected this public response to COVID as a whole. It honestly felt like that alone could have been its own documentary, just that part of the story. And so how did you edit that down into what we saw in, in the finished piece? The truth is that there's not a lot in that area because he is still a, you know, a person who with a very important position in the federal government. And so Tony understands in his core what can and cannot be said and how much opinion he can bring into a conversation. So the yikes um, that you uh, might be uh, referring to, you know, that has to say, that one word is meant to to say a lot. I think that he knew that he was saying a lot with that one, one, one word. And so we needed to, you know, really have the audience understand. And then what you see him do is just tell stories. And then editing is a wonderful thing that you can, you know, integrate the archive with his retelling of a story. If you really go back and watch, he does not level any opinion, um, but he's a good storyteller. And Patsy, I also think what former President Bush said about him is true. Of course, he has reactions to all sorts of situations, but he doesn't come into the Oval Office to make any president, Democrat, Republican, whomever, look good. He comes in to give them the facts and hopefully have them react to the facts in ways that are going to be helpful. He is exceptionally adept at working in Washington, but he's not a politician. And I actually really love that by from former President Bush, because I think that really sums up who he is. If you're a public servant, you don't do it because you want to make money. You don't do it for the glory. You do it because you care. When you're involved in a race to stop a horrible disease, you always feel you're not doing things quickly enough.